In this video, we're going to look at how to debug PowerShell scripts in Visual Studio. So I have a PowerShell project created here. Um, I actually made another video about PowerShell projects. You can kind of look at that to see how I created this. Um, the idea, though, is mostly that I have this script.ps1 in here, and I have that open on the left-hand side. If I want to execute this script, what I can do is either press F5, or I can click this little uh, Start button up here to actually run this script. The script is just getting processes, and then it is sleeping for three seconds. So we didn't see any output, um, but that's because I didn't output anything, and you can see that it did hang for three seconds after I ran it. So output will actually go to two different places, though, inside Visual Studio. Um, one is this PowerShell interactive window. Um, and if you don't have that open, like if you were to close this, what you can do is you can actually click View, PowerShell, um, Interactive Window to open that window. The other place that you'll see output is in the output window. So um, here is uh, the output in there. And again, if you don't have that window, you can click View, Output to open that window. Um, but let's say there, there was something going on with my script and I wanted to actually uh, step through it. So what I would do there is I would set a breakpoint. To do that, what you can do is you can actually click on the left-hand uh, gutter here, and you can see the breakpoint gray circle shows up. And if I click that, it's actually going to create a breakpoint uh, on that line. Now when I run the script, it's actually going to stop on that line, and um, we kind of have some uh, windows change all over the place, and new buttons show up. So now that I've like run the script, I'm now in like debug mode for Visual Studio. So it's two different window layouts when you're in editing mode versus debug mode. So in debug mode, we actually have more windows that we can use and that kind of thing, um, which I will show you right now. So on the bottom here, um, you'll notice the locals window. And the locals window are local variables. So these are all the variables that are currently defined uh, in my PowerShell process. And you can th see things like execution context. You can see what type they are. You can see the value. And if it's like something that's uh, readable, it'll show up there. Otherwise, it's going to kind of show the type name. Um, on the right-hand side, we have the breakpoints window. So these are all the breakpoints I currently have set. It allows you to manage all the breakpoints in one place. On the bottom, we have the call stack window. So um, this is useful when you're really nested, like in lots of functions or um, that kind of thing. Uh, you can see where you're coming from. So if you had modules involved and all that kind of stuff, uh, this call stack could get kind of deep and it's kind of hard to understand where you're coming from. And that's uh, why this is useful. And we'll actually see that change in a second when I do a step into command. Um, your PowerShell interactive window is available, and you can see it is in, currently in debug mode, so you can run commands in the debug state. Um, and there's also the watch window, which I'll show you how to use in just a second. If any one of these windows is not showing up, you can always click debug windows, and then you'll see that we have a bunch of windows here, like here's the local, the watch window, you can actually have multiple watch windows, the call stack window, etc. All right, so up along the top here, we have our debugging commands. So it looks pretty crazy with all these buttons up here. You can actually hide this stuff. So if there are things that you do not want, you can actually really customize this to make it way less cluttered. But this is kind of the default look of um, Visual Studio. So that's why I'm, I'm using it right now. But what we're looking at here are the debugging commands. So we have continue, which will just uh, let the script continue to run. Stop, which will stop debugging the script. Restart, which will stop and then re rerun the script. Um, we, I don't really know what show next statement is, honestly. Uh, step into will step into a function. So I'll show that in a sec when we step into start my sleep. Step over will step over the current line. So um, we're going to do that to step over this line. And then step out of will step out of a function um, or scope. So um, in that case, like you had a big function that you're running through, and you're like, OK, I don't need to be in here anymore. You can step out of it. So if I click step over, it's actually going to step over to the next executing line, which in this case is start my sleep. Um, one thing that happened there was we actually assigned the process variable. Um, in Visual Studio, you can hover over that and see what's in there. So there's all my processes. And one thing I said I was going to do is show you the watch window. And what you can do with the watch window is you can actually put your variable name in here and then just hit enter. So if you're like really curious about a particular variable, um, you can actually uh, 
put it in there, and then you have access to um, information about that variable there. And it's called the watch window because you can watch it change. So uh, if you're like iterating through something and you want to look at the iterator or that kind of thing, you could put it in the watch window. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to step into so F11 or the step into button. And what that's going to do is actually step into my start sleep function. If I were to hit F10 or um, step over, it would not have stepped into that function. Um, and now you can see that I'm actually on this line here and um, start my sleep is currently sitting on the start sleep command. And one thing that has changed is if we actually go to our call stack, you can see that the call stack is a little different. Um, now you can see we are at start my sleep. So we're actually on line seven inside the start my sleep command. And we came from line 10, which is the actual call for uh, that particular command. So you can actually double click these and it will like kind of move the cursor to those locations. So you can actually see where in your script that was running. So I'm gonna click continue and allow this script to just run and it's going to wait three seconds and then exit. So that those are kind of the basics of editing PowerShell scripts in Visual Studio. One other thing that I wanted to show you was the, the, the way that you can edit scripts without actually having to create a project in Visual Studio. So uh, PowerShell tools for Visual Studio also supports um, solution folders is what they call it. So I can say file open folder and rather than um, selecting a SLN pro or solution file or a PowerShell project file, I can just select a um, folder. In this case, I'm going to do my form project. Hit select, and you can see that it's just it's similar to VS Code, where you have just a folder of things. Um, and I can double click that, and I still have the same PowerShell experience, um, where I have. A script. I could run this script if I want to. I can set breakpoints in this script if I want to, and then I can execute it. So it's just going to execute the current document, and it's the same experience. We still have uh, locals. We still have the call stack and everything. Um, I don't necessarily need a um, PowerShell project or solution created at all. Um, I can just open a folder and run PowerShell scripts. So in this video, we looked at the uh, various debugging features of PowerShell tools for Visual Studio.